Hey, welcome back, everybody. Time once again to grab your board and start paddling as we swim out into that sea of ideas here and see what we can churn up today here. Hey, what do you think of that news, Matt Hine? You're baseball nut. You think baseball is going to happen or not here? Well, I hope so. I mean, I think for a sport that is facing more competition than ever, I think it's, it's critical that they put something on the field. I think they missed a window to be one of the first major sporting yeah. leagues back playing uh, and really sort of having a little more ownership of the airwaves. And isn't it um, true that baseball but, um, attendance and viewership has been down anyway? Uh, maybe it's just attendance? Well, sure. Or... I mean, like, you know, so, you know, baseball is not, I mean, as huge a baseball fan as I am, like, you know, we call it the national pastime kind of out of tradition. Uh, it is not the most watched sports. Uh, it is not the fastest growing sport. It's, if you look at younger people, the news is even worse for baseball. Yeah, so right. you would think that they would want to do anything possible to create a resurgence, to have some fun with the schedule, to say, listen, this is not going to be a normal year, so let's have some fun with it and let's let the kids play. And so far that has not happened. So I am um, disappointed in baseball so far, but boy, I need, I miss, especially this summer, I miss like being able to just turn on a game and just waste away an afternoon. I miss yeah. being able to turn on the radio and work <laughs> in the yard or work in the garage and and just have the dulcet tones of an announcer calling balls and strikes. Well, it kind of fits in with your topic today here. You know, the good news is uh, baseball's still around. The bad news, they can't figure out how to play it during the pandemic. It's kind of what you guys are trying to do, figuring out with sales. Hey, the good news is you're a salesperson. The bad news is go figure out how to be a salesman in the worst time to sell anything in the planet here. This is pretty rough, pretty rough. But I think, you know, now that we've been doing it for a few weeks or a few months, we see that there are plenty of companies that are figuring it out. Well, let's get into it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. If you're joining us here on the live on the Funnel Media Radio Network, thank you for making us part of your work day. I assume most of you listening are probably still working from home, but I know a few people are starting to return to office. So wherever you are on a Thursday, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. And for everyone who is listening on the podcast, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, our numbers, Paul, continue to go up you know, loving uh, the, the time people are spending. I think instead of commuting, maybe they're going on walks. Maybe they're going around the neighborhood. Maybe they're just instead of watching baseball, of of on... instead of watching <laughs> baseball, they're listening to Matt Hines. That's the been if the past. I can't moment. listen. If I can't listen to the Chicago Cubs, if I can't listen to the dulcet tones of Jim Hughes, uh, for those of you Cub fans and know what I'm talking about, I might as well listen to some podcasts. I've got yeah. a few favorites. I actually, Paul, we can talk about this. Someday. I don't listen to any business podcasts. You don't? Um, okay. I, know I, sh I know I should. There's a bunch of occasional yeah. episodes. But I listen to a variety of other uh, podcasts that just kind of help me sort of get away from things, especially if I'm out walking. But anyway, let's get into it. We on this podcast here, Sales Pipeline Radio. Past episodes available at salespipelineradio.com are always featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing. Today is absolutely no different. Very excited to have with us today the CEO of Chorus, Jim Benton. Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Great to reconnect. Thank you for agreeing to do this. We haven't had a ton of time to connect, but I was honored to be part of your morning um, you know, all-hands call. Uh, we were towards the beginning of the pandemic. I think you guys were one of the first to sort of set up with a remote team and with a remote audience just sort of a morning pick-me-up and a morning set of sort of inspiration and ideas. Cause I, I want to talk about Chorus and I want to talk about you a little bit, but let's start with that. Like, where did that idea come from and how has that evolved since I did it? Yeah, I was four days in on the job and realized that we had data that the world needed, that we could show that sales teams were being incredibly productive as they'd moved from offices to their homes. And it kind of was counter to what you'd expect. And we wanted to get it out there so that leaders could make the right calls. They were looking at how to optimize their team. And two, I just wanted to connect with people. So even our call that morning and just the human side of how we were all adjusting and what we could share was incredibly helpful. Yeah, no, I was impressed. And I think that, you know, it's been impressive to see a lot of companies pivot to doing things that are relevant in the moment, both, you know, relative to the pandemic, relative to Black Mile Lives Matter, and really sort of combining sort of what their maybe typical business message might be with thinking about and understanding the humanity behind what we've been dealing with over the last couple of months and really sort of resonating more on a personal level with people that, especially in B2B, sometimes we're not very good at that. We tend to be buildings talking to buildings when it's really the people in the buildings that are those that still have a heart, still breathe, still have emotions, um, and um, still trying to figure out how to get through this. And so kudos to you guys for doing that. I appreciate it. I think we were in crisis mode. It was sort of this wartime mode of how do we you know, connect daily. It's not a podcast. It's not a webinar. It's just like the raw data. And now we're beyond that. We're in a different zone. Now we're starting to settle in on that. It's more of a weekly approach to a much deeper dive on the metrics. It's now more of a 
you know, sharing in a more classic webinar podcast way, then we're re-kicking that off uh, June 25th. So you mentioned, and part of the reason I was excited to have you on here is you were less than a week on the job when you got that going. And so for those of you who don't know, Jim, you know, long time, sort of he's, he's been leading organizations in the kind of cloud computing for a long time, was co-founder and chief strategy officer at ClearSlide not that long ago. That, well, that was just a couple of years ago. And has been now been the CEO of Chorus for four months. And so you joined in March. And so like, you know, when, when I saw that, I kind of thought in my mind, okay, like, welcome to the new job. Here's your pandemic, right? And so there's a plenty of leaders <laughs> that have had little time on the job to figure out their strategy, to get their sea legs under them, and then sort of face headwinds like this. You had it all basically in the first week. What was that like? What was that like, you know, sort of guiding a business through that and a group of employees through that, but then also doing that when you are yourself a brand new employee? Yeah, well, I give a lot of credit to Zoom. It sure made it a lot easier to onboard remotely. So my very first day was March 16th, and the office was closed. So doing it from home and meeting the great chorus team that's across the globe. And I think that, you know, a program like the Daily Briefing, we kicked off in four days because of the remarkable team. So our marketing team, Natalie Saravino, running that program with us, and our research team out in Tel Aviv pulling the data, it was just incredible to see the group sort of come together and do that. But I think from you know, my side, look, I co-founded ClearSlide back in March of 09, right when the market bottomed at 6,500. So I do think that during these times, you sometimes see the best out of people. And I think as you think about even the sales motion that we were talking about, we are seeing the best of people right now. We're seeing people connect at a really human level. We're seeing teams come together in a more thoughtful way to go solve really immediate problems. These are sometimes the times I think you can you know, do your best work. Oh, no doubt. We're talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Jim Benton. He's the CEO of Chorus. And, you know, you guys really have kind of had a front row seat in terms of seeing how some of those conversations have changed, what prospects are talking about, how sales teams are pivoting some of their messages as well. So can you just kind of briefly kind of share what Chorus is, what Chorus does for people that may not know, and then talk a little bit about what you have seen by sort of mining your own data and listening to those changes and what you're finding about the way that sales teams have really sort of pivoted in this time as well? Sure. So Chorus.ai is a conversation intelligence platform, which means that we're in the conversation. Those moments that are the most important, the, the Zoom meeting, the call that you have. When you connect to a product, we capture that interaction, the video, the audio, and we, as a top AI 100 company, we deeply understand what's really happening in that call, what competitive mentions, what signals, are we asking the right questions? And we can do coaching at scale. It's driven by you know, our AI and our, our machine learning, but our ability to help reps to do their best work, to understand what moves deals forward, and then to share those learnings. And so one data point that we've seen just in the last month is that we're seeing a 53% increase in managers taking, you know, coaching actions with their teams. And that's 53% since before COVID. So there's more coaching happening right now across the entire course platform than we saw in the good times. And that's just incredible. I love that stat. It's pretty amazing. And I think that, you know, when a lot of this went down and people started to work from home and prospects became potentially a little less available, I think there was a lot of concern among sales teams that connect rates would go down. And I think in a lot of cases we've seen from smart sellers, we've seen the opposite. And I think it's actually been quite contrary to the cold calling is dead conversation that you hear a lot of the modern sellers talk about and social sellers talk about. But it seems like connect rates are at least holding steady, if not going up that prospects yep. are more open to talking to sales reps, especially those that have shown that they can provide some value. And it's, it'll be interesting to see if that continues as we get into sort of maybe a little more back to the office or more of a hybrid sort of work from home, work from the office, wherever we are mode. What's some of the data you've seen that, that's kind of supported that, that can give some optimism to, to sales teams? It's exactly right. Look, cold calls are down 27% since January. So we are seeing a decrease in cold calls being made, though connect rates have held steady. Uh, they've been in the 9 to 10% mark. And that's been in, really interesting. So if you do make a call right now, people are willing to connect at the same rate they were meeting before. And we've consistently heard from the CROs out in the community that the calls are working. People have their office phones routing to their cell phone. People are at home and have more time and want to engage. And the empathy 
on those calls is really, you know, it's a unique stat we've been tracking, looking specifically at um, you know, when does the when does the demo start? So we used to find that the demo, you know, when a call would shift into kind of demo screen share, would start at about ten and a half minutes in on a call back in February, and now it's close to twelve minutes in May. So we're finding that people are spending more time getting to know each other, being authentic, and that's leading to demos starting a bit later and being about eight percent shorter now than they were pre-COVID. Oh, that is interesting. Uh, we're going to have to take a quick break here in a second, but I, I wanted to get a sense for, you know, with your own sales team, are you, are you, I would imagine you guys are seeing an increase in demand for this as well as you have a remote team that is not able to sort of sit on on calls and sit together and do live coaching, that the need for managers and coaches to being able to remotely sort of coach teams based on how those calls are going, seems to me that that kind of demand and need uh, right now has gone up significantly. We've seen significant demand, especially at the enterprise field level, but teams that used to walk the halls that could see the reps, feel the energy, feel really disconnected. And Chorus is allowing them to do that digitally to deeply understand. But we're finding sales cycles where very large teams are saying, by Tuesday, I need that entire group in on Chorus. And look, I mean, that's our role. That's what we can do to help people right now. And so we want to do that as much as possible. Awesome. We're going to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll be back with more with Jim Benton. He's the CEO of Chorus. We're going to talk more about increasing the need and, uh, and the impact of sales coaching and uh, providing that in a remote environment. We'll be right back. How do you continue to drive predictable revenue in an increasingly unpredictable time? Creating a revenue growth engine is no small task, nor is it one that can be done overnight. And these days, it can feel harder than ever to hit your stride. So how can you overcome the obstacles? Read the new research report on the state of predictable revenue growth from Sixth Sense and Heinz Marketing. Get it now at hub.sixcents.com slash PRG. That's hub dot the number six, S-E-N-S-E dot com slash PRG. And with that, we head back to Matt and his guests. And can I ask you a question? I don't get a chance to talk to these kind of guys very often here. Can I throw in my <laughs> my six, yeah, go for it. six cents, my two cents? I wonder, you talk about it in the spot we just ran here about predictable revenue. Has that term gone out the window for a while? Can we predict anything in these difficult times? Like how many sales we're going to make or what our revenue numbers are going to be? It's all over the board. It's either coming back or it's going to take forever. I don't know. Will certainly become more difficult. I would say it's potentially become more difficult, but at the same time, become more important than ever. I think that you know organizations that are doing random acts of marketing, organizations that are just sort of inconsistently or in an unorganized way, like throwing things against the wall, marketing, sending emails, sales, making more phone calls, like those random things may work. You may get by with them a little more easily in a good market, but when you face certain headwinds. I think the deficiencies of those programs really sort of show their ugly head. So I think having a foundational program in place that can drive consistent pipeline, that you know where to turn the crank to fill the gaps when times get tough, it becomes more important. It becomes a lot harder to get that going during the tough time. But I think it certainly is a flag for getting those programs sort of in a foundational way. Jim, I'd love to get your feedback on that as well. So the idea of, you know, especially as a CEO, looking at forecasts from your sales team and trying to give your board guidance on sort of how you're going to do, like, has that gotten harder? And or what are some ways to mitigate the difficulty on that? Yeah, I think to your point, the the focus right now on your ABM accounts is critical. And what we're seeing is that although overall meeting productivity across the industry has been fairly consistent and held steady since pre-COVID, it's not consistent at the vertical or segment level. So, for example, the data and BI companies are down 20% on meeting productivity. HR tech companies are down 28%. So if you're selling into those segments, they're more challenged in COVID. Whereas if you're selling into collaboration project management companies, they're up 45% since pre-COVID. Or fintech companies are up 10%. Security's up 7 So finding the segments right now that are in more of a tailwind, those are the ones that are buying and the ability to make sure that you're coming off as business essential, the extreme ROI, we're finding that there's a 91% increase in CFOs showing up in the sales calls right now since Mm pre-COVID. That is a material change. Wow. Not surprising to hear that, just to sort of get sort of firsthand knowledge around that. 
I want to get back to sort of talking about sort of the opportunity that managers have around sales coaching. When I think of what you guys are doing at Chorus and for the companies that haven't looked at it and seen it, it's, it's, I've seen so many companies look at the platform and be like, I didn't even think that I could potentially do this. I hadn't even thought of this potential use case. I hadn't even thought about like how much more efficiently and how much more accurately I could give feedback to my reps. And on the other side of that, I see a lot of sales managers lament the fact that they feel like they spend more time managing and not enough time coaching. And they don't feel like they get to spend enough time one-on-one -on -one with their reps to help them be better. And to me, when I think about this kind of a platform that allows you to see inside these calls, it gives you a level of clarity and insight, but also some very specific ways for your managers and reps to have much more productive conversations. And I'm, I'm sure you're seeing that across your clients now as well. I think it's exactly right. It's about deeply understanding the relationship that your reps are connecting with prospects. So as I use Chorus, I'll be either on my mobile phone in the evening watching some of the, the calls of the day and then going right to the moments where either a question came up or a specific uh, tracker that we look at and just hear how the rep did it. What was the experience that we were creating? How did we close out that call? What were the next steps that were done and just a click of a button getting in? And so I think the key is just at scale, the ability to understand the experience we're creating and just inspect it is huge. And at the rep level, reps really want a system to take notes for them. They want a system that's going to capture this. They can share that quick snippet with the product leader or marketing leader and say, here's the feedback, you know, at this precise moment, why don't you listen to these 30 seconds? One interesting thing, one of our team members emailed me this week saying, Jim, can you reach out to this senior leader? And they said, here's a comment from a call last week where they spoke about this new feature idea. And I click on it and it goes to chorus and it just played the 30 seconds in the middle of a 30 minute call. But it gave me the right context and sentiment and tone to really thoughtfully write an email that captured it. And that's what's different about the types of relationships we're building today. Well, and as a lifelong marketing guy, I want those insights so that I can improve the communication recommendations we're giving to sales, to improve the insights, to refine the message and the approach. But I also, as a product marketer, I want that. Like if I'm thinking about the addressable market and I'm thinking or I understand what customers are doing, I mean, this is another in such an efficient way. Yes, you can make your sales reps better. Yes, you can make your marketing better. But what better way to hear first how the industry is changing and what people are asking about than to be able to sort of grok, you know, the collective intelligence from how many calls that potentially is across your sales organization, as well as your customer service organization to see what's trending. What are people asking about? It used to be we had to go do expensive focus groups. Now you can just listen to what's being said all around your business every day. That's what led to our daily briefing. I did a search across Chorus on COVID-19. So I just, in the search box said, are we hearing about COVID-19 in sales calls? And as I looked at our bar chart and how that trended, I noticed that in February 23rd, 8% of all calls had COVID. It went to 29% a week later, 63 by March 8th and 98. But that ability to inspect hundreds, thousands of calls on a keyword, and you know that could be a competitive mention, that's different. And I think that's what product and marketing want. They want the voice of the customer to come back. They want to make decisions that are customer driven, but we need to get them more data. And this completely changes the way that marketing and just leadership in general can connect into the customer base. I love this. Well, we just have a couple more minutes here with Jim Benton. He's the CEO of Chorus. You can find him at chorus.ai. And if nothing else, go to the site, click on resources. You're going to find just an amazing set of information. They've got a state of conversation intelligence report. It's got some really interesting stats. If you like the idea of what Jim mentioned, we talked about at the beginning, this daily briefing he was doing, you can catch on-demand replays of those on their website as well. You can just go to resources.chorus.ai. AI. Well, I remember I was at a startup. This is back, you know, in the uh, the early 2000s, and none of this technology, of course, existed. Uh, but we had something we thought was cutting edge. We had a tool where we could look and see which phone calls were happening across the sales organization. And we could see, you know, we would look for those. We would get together in a room every once in a while, like sales managers, marketing leaders, you know, COO, and we would look for calls that were at least two minutes long, thinking, oh, that's a live one, and we we dial into that one. And we just sort of, you know, plug in and listen in. And we thought it was amazing that we could do that so efficiently, right? And it's amazing to see now how inefficient that was compared to what technology exists today. Where do you think this is now going? I mean, I think there could be a day when we look back at even as advanced as the platforms are today that we're like, 
boy, how inefficient was that? And how, you know, how you know, we had to manually do all these things, you know, without, I don't want you to give away your product roadmap, but where do you think this is going to evolve into that is going to benefit not just sales teams, but also the marketing team, the product marketing, and then company leadership as well? I think the key is relationships, which is how do we develop really meaningful relationships with our customers? And given that we've got so many different folks talking to the customer from a BDR to an AE to a solutions engineer to customer success, how do we make sure that the conversation is flowing across those folks? How do we make sure that each person's asking the right questions and bringing the company's best to those interactions? And so I think it's going is about helping companies to really foster that relationship for others to be able to log in and instantly kind of capture a relationship, but not in a form field, not reading a couple lines in the CRM, but to actually watch the snippet, to hear the tone, to see the smile on someone's face. That is what's helping us to build more meaningful, long lasting relationships and relationships drive transactions. That's what drives the revenue. So we need to make sure that we're the human side of sales continues to shine and that we help the people to bring the best. So if we can find that, a certain dialogue, you know, by talking about a feature 6.7 times more than the rest of your team leads to closed one, how do we help mm. the rest of the team bring that into their calls to build better relationships? That is such a great insight. As we wrap up here, I want to talk a little bit about just how things have changed for you over the next last three months. You know, you're just starting a new job. You're navigating a company through this. Uh, what we've been asking guests the last few weeks is, I mean, what's one thing that you miss from the old normal that you're looking forward to getting back to once we can sort of get out and about in a little broader way? What's something that you don't miss, something that was part of your old normal that now that you're experiencing things in a different way that you don't want to go back to? I miss in the old normal the walking to lunch with coworkers. Mm -hmm. I don't think I appreciated it before, but that casual, hey, we're heading out, who wants to come? And you walk a few blocks in San Francisco and the dialogue that happens in those light interactions, I miss that a lot. I miss the beer after work, where it's half work, half personal, just getting to know people. I miss the fun that came from the human in-person interaction. But I will say on the, the new, I've enjoyed the, this level of increased connectivity to people that are not local. The fact that we've got a remarkable engineering team in Tel Aviv and Toronto and a incredible BDR group in Boston. Everybody's tile is the same size on Zoom. Everyone's a click away. And I think I feel more connected to our remote team than I would had COVID not happened. And that's been an incredible insight. And the way that we've brought the company together as just a universal sort of everything's equal. It's not a TV and a camera on the wall for the remote and the rest of us in the room. I think that that democratization of location is really powerful and i'm really hoping that stays as we get back into work one day those are good answers i like that a lot yeah, i also miss sort of that small talk right like i think you know when we're on someone i saw someone on linkedin this morning say like why exactly do we wave at the end of zoom meetings like i don't wave at people when i'm leaving a conference room i think it's that and in part <laughs> it's that it's that need for human connection the fact that we're looking at each other but i want people to see that i'm saying goodbye and like, we, when you leave the room you can do the chit chat you can talk on the way out it's like hey how's your golf game or hey how was your weekend like that doesn't exist as efficiently and as naturally in the Zoom world. So yeah, I, I look forward to that as well. I, I did also notice that, you know, we were talking about sports and sports coming back before we came onto this. Jim, you, I don't know if you're still playing tennis, but like I saw, I saw on your LinkedIn resume that you played tennis for Santa Clara University. <laughs> that is by definition, maybe the most, the perfect social distancing sport. You literally almost never get right next to each other. Are you still playing tennis? I am still playing tennis. I made it out last weekend, but people are talking about how tennis players need to wear a glove on one hand so that the ball isn't oh. shared, which I don't, I don't buy into that. So uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of tennis and uh, I started to get back out there and not wearing gloves when I play tennis. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I want to thank our guest again today, Jim Benton, CEO of Chorus. You can check him out at chorus.ai. As I mentioned, they got an amazing resource section, just lots of great content. And uh, definitely check out his daily briefings. Just a great way to engage with an audience and share insights they're seeing in their product. We got a lot of great guests coming up as we round out Q2, head into the summer. And we'll be back here uh, next week and every week, Thursday, 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. On behalf of my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks so much for another week. Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been surfing along on the Sales Pipeline right here in the Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you.
CMOs and marketing leaders have the increasingly complex task of effectively communicating marketing's value to their CEO and board. And as today's markets face growing uncertainties, the need for clear, consistent, and predictable communication will only continue to grow. How do they do it? Read the new research report on marketing's role in the boardroom from Drift, G2, and Heinz Marketing. Get it now at drift.com slash alignment. That's drift, D-R-I-F-T dot com slash alignment.